So if not barefoot, then what? Well, my personal favorite is double-soled leather moccasins. They are like the perfect footwear. They'll mold to your feet, they can get wet and then they dry, and you can feel every bit of the ground underneath you. When you wear them on your feet, you really feel like you're walking in the footsteps of generations and generations of ancestors before you. And once the outer sole wears out, you can replace it with another. Even Lewis and Clark, American white men as they were, had their whole crew outfitted with moccasins for their journey. It was by far and away the best footwear choice for their lifestyle and for their relationship with nature. Having left society behind, they needed something more natural. And even walking around my neighborhood on well-groomed lawns, my neighbor's lawns are well-groomed, not mine, I feel connected. I feel mindful. My gait changes. The way my foot strikes the ground changes. And just wearing the moccasins starts to change me a little. My favorite supplier of earthing moccasins, by the way, is Moccasins Canada. They are linked down in the descriptions below. My favorite is the double-soled oil tan moosehide moccasins. But they are my favorite. What is the problem with them? Well, firstly, maintenance. Maintenance used to just be part of life in the modern world. If you had leather, you were constantly oiling your leather. If you had a cast iron pan, you were constantly seasoning your cast iron pan. If you had anything at all of value, there were always these constant maintenance processes in order to keep them in good shape and to slow down the inevitable wear and tear, the death and decline that will eventually take all material things. This maintenance thing is a totally different mindset and a totally different lifestyle than the one that we're accustomed to. Nowadays, we buy shoes, and then when we wear out the sole, instead of resoling it, we throw out the whole shoe and buy new ones. I believe that there is merit in returning to a more mindful relationship to our possessions, and I believe that ongoing maintenance is part of that. Maintenance completely transforms the relationship that you have to your possessions. Why? Because you get to witness the process of death and decay. You get to see natural processes try to reclaim your object. You stare into the abyss. Just like that cast iron pan rusts, so will all matter and all order descend into chaos. But then you come in. By your effort, by your hands, by your spirit, the pan is redeemed from corruption. What was dying is now restored to life and restored to a higher function. Every time you season your cast iron pan, every time you oil your leather shoes, it's an icon of the resurrection. It's an icon of the immortality of the soul and the little piece of transcendence that we've all been given. On a very practical note, another issue with uh, leather moccasins is that if you have any plans on walking on asphalt, concrete, on any of these modern materials that are everywhere, then you are going to shred through your leather moccasins very quickly. Not only have I spent a lot of time wearing moccasins, I have also shredded through them. And I shred through them so quickly that I started looking for rubber-soled alternatives. Gasp, rubber. Yes, but my rubber-soled alternatives are still earthing shoes. The rubber-soled earthing shoes usually involve copper and conductive metals, which we will be discussing momentarily. But this shredding of leather isn't just a practical issue. It's really emblematic of the particular position that we are in as people. We are everywhere surrounded and engulfed by modernity. It's almost impossible to travel any distance in the United States through remotely hospitable land without encountering a paved road. If we really want to live a lifestyle where leather-soled shoes make sense... We're going to have to abandon everything that we're accustomed to, and we're going to have to return to a long-forgotten way of life. I personally would love it if my life looked a little more like the traditional life of the Native American tribes that make my moccasins. And I hope that whenever I oil the leather sole, I learn to participate in the type of solitude and mindfulness that was abundant and commonplace in ages past. But not even most Native Americans are living traditionally nowadays. Inuits might still hunt seals, for example, and process them in the traditional way, but usually they have snowmobiles. It's a big question as to whether it's even possible 
to return to a traditional lifestyle given how far we've come from it, how much we've changed both ourselves and the world around us.